Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brian and welcome back to the Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. In this episode, we'll be diving into methods. While instance variables give your object state, methods give them behavior. And through the use of methods, you can implement the practice of encapsulation. Methods do things on objects. Want to change a name? Write a change name method. Want an enemy soldier to take damage? Write a take damage method. In short, methods contain code that you can call on demand. Writing a method requires a few components. First, you provide an access modifier such as public, private, or protected. This determines who can use the method. Next, you provide a return type. For instance, if you wanted to write a method to write text in reverse, you'd set the return type to be a string. If you don't want to return a value, use the keyword void instead. Next, you give it a name, and the name should be descriptive as to what the method actually does. Naming is much of an art as it is a science. You want the name to express what the method can do, and think about the method calls in context of an object. For instance, you may want to write a method to check if a soldier is still in the game. You may create a name like active. This is a little vague. Rather, you can call it alive instead, and that gives a better sense about what this method does, but it's actually much better to call the method is alive. As you can see in the code, it reads more like a sentence when used in an if block. This makes your code self-documenting, which is the goal. While obscure complex code is fun to show off at cocktail parties, it's no fun at all to figure out what is going on when you have a deadline charging at you like a bull. Once you have your method name in place, you can add the parameters. All parameters are placed within a pair of parentheses. Parameters are any variables that you want to pass into the method. For instance, if you want to find out whether a number is even or odd, you provide the type of the variable and give it a name. Any additional parameters are separated by commas. Once you have finished adding the parameters, you close it with a parentheses. This is known as a method header. Next, you provide the method body, and that goes between a pair of braces. From here, you provide your code. If your method returns a value, you use the return statement. The return statement can go anywhere in the method body, but once the code path reaches a return statement, it will exit the method even if there is more code after that statement. Typically, I like to place the return statement as the final statement in my method, but there are times when you'll want to return early from a method. For instance, if a value passed into a method doesn't meet a certain criteria, you may opt to return out of that method. Methods allow you to perform encapsulation on your object. The idea behind encapsulation is to hide the object internals from other object so this current object can manage its own state. Take, for instance, a high score object. In it, the high score object contains a score field which must always be positive. When defining the object, you set the score field to private. This prevents the field from being changed outside of the object. The big question, how do you access it? Why, through methods, of course. First, you create a getter method and call it getScore. This just returns the score. Next, you want to set the score, so you write a setScore method, passing in an int. Now the callee can read and write to that field. This may look like a lot of busy work when you can just write to a public field, but there's good reason for this. If anything changes in this object, you won't have to rewrite all the code that accesses this object. For instance, here we are calling setScore. Now, what if you wanted to include multipliers into the equation? If you wrote it like this, you'd have to rewrite it throughout your code base to look something like this. By writing it like this, you automatically acquire any changes made by set score without having to change your code in other areas. This makes your code flexible to change. Let's see this in action. Okay, let's dive into methods. And to do this, I'm gonna create a new script. So I have beginning object-oriented programming selected. I'm gonna click the create button and I'm gonna choose C sharp. And for this one, we're gonna call this NPC like so. 
So here we have our MPC class open. And since we're working with structs, we're going to delete this and we're just going to create this new struct. So I'm going to call struct and we're going to call this NPC like so. And now we're going to add our methods. The first method is a talk method. So we want this to be public so anyone can access it. And what I'm going to do is I don't want it to return a value. So I'm going to set the return type as void. And now I'm going to just, gonna, I'm just going to give it the name talk. And it's taking no parameters, as you can see. So here we are, we're going to put the braces. And now within the braces, we add our code and we can add whatever code we want. Generally speaking, you don't want to add a lot of code into your methods. You want to break break apart your code into tasks and make a method for each of those tasks. So a general rule of thumb is if you have a very long method, you, you may want to break that down into individual methods. Okay, so all we're going to do is just simply print out to the console and we're going to call this blah, 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 like so. Back in Unity, I'm just going to create a new C-sharp script and we're going to call this methods. So here we have our method script open and I'm going to implement on disable like we've been doing. And notice that on disable takes a void because this is also another method. And now we're going to have my MPC talk. Back in Unity, I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to remove whatever script I have attached to it. And now I'm going to add my method script. And now we can play the game. We'll switch to the console, select the cube and disable it. And you can see we have blah, 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 just as you would expect. Okay, back here in our MPC struct, we're going to want to create, say, a variable to hold the, the NPC's gold. So we're going to set this as private. And this is, this is just going to be an integer, and we're going to set this to gold like so. Now I want to provide methods for outside objects to access this property. So to do this, I'm going to type public. And now I have to signify the return type. And remember, we're, not, we're now going to return an integer because the gold is of type int. So instead of typing void, I type int like so. And I give it the name get gold. And this, again, this takes no parameters at all. You'll also notice here, we're getting this little error message in here. And this is because it's saying all, not all cold paths return a value. Just, this just simply means I am not returning anything yet from this method. Here, I'm going to type return and I'm going to type gold like so. Now let's add our setter. Now this setter isn't going to return a value, so this is going to be a void method, and we're gonna call this set gold. And now we're gonna pass in a parameter, and this is going to be of type int, and we'll say new gold. Or actually we can even call this gold like so. Now we're going to set it. First, what we can do is check to see if this is a, a valid gold if this is a valid number so we can say if gold is greater than zero and now we can set the actual value now you can see here we have gold which is our instance variable and we have gold which is a parameter name what's happening in this case is we can't access our instance variable because our parameter name is has the same name it's essentially obscuring our instance variable to reference the instance variable, we use a keyword called this. And now I can type gold and we assign gold to that. The this keyword represents this current object. It's referencing this struct here. And this allows us to call the actual instance variable on this struct. And then we can set it to this current parameter name. We're gonna switch back to method and now what I'm going to do is let's create another field. This time we're going to make this public and we'll call this gold amount like so. And then inside of here, we'll assign this gold amount and then print out the result.
Here we are back in Unity. I'm gonna select my cube. And what we'll do is we'll give this a gold amount of 100. And now we'll play. And in the console, we don't see anything. Now when we deselect the cube, you can see it now prints out the gold amount. Well, that's the end of this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a monster struct. It should have a health field, which is an integer, and you should write getters and setters for the health. So it should have a get health, which returns an int, and a set health, which takes in an int. Next, I want you to create a my monster script, and I want you to attach this to a cube. This my monster script should contain a damage field, which is an integer and a monster. The first thing you'll do is in the start method, I want you to create a new monster and then set its health to 100. Then in on disable, I want you to change the monster's health to apply damage after every on disable. So whatever, it, whatever damage number is entered into the inspector. If the monster's health is less than zero, you should print out monster is dead and then destroy the game object, the current game object by using this code. The monster is not dead, simply just print out health is and then print out the monster's health. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, in your challenge, I asked you to create a monster script. In this monster script, will have a health variable and if the health gets lower than zero, then the monster will be destroyed. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna create a new C-sharp script and we're gonna call this monster. And let's open this up in our code editor. So what I'm gonna do is delete this here and we're gonna make this a struct. And now we're going to assign it a instance variable called health. The next thing we wanna do is create our getters and setters. First, let's create our getter and our getter returns a value, so this is going to be int, and we'll call this get health. And we're going to return the health like so. And now we wanna create our setter. So this setter returns nothing, and we will call this set health. And again, we'll pass in a variable called health, and to assign it to our local instance variable health, we use the this keyword. So we type this period health equals health like so. Okay, so here we have our monster script. It's all ready to go. Now we need to create an instance of it. Back in C Sharp, I'm going to click the Create button. I'm going to select C Sharp Script, and I'll choose my monster. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. Okay, here is our My Monster class. The very first thing to do is to create an instance variable that will keep an instance of a monster. We'll just call this monster for now. And I'm gonna create a public variable that will keep track of how much damage we're going to add to the monster. Here you can see, I like to put my publics before I put my privates. And if I do this on every script, it becomes very easy to find out where my private variables are located. I don't have to do a lot of searching. Now in start, we're gonna create a new instance of the monster like so, and we're going to assign it some health. We'll set it to 100. Now in each on disable, we're going to, we're going to apply some damage. The way we'll do this is we'll do monster set health, and we're going to then call monster get health minus damage. Now, in this case, we could create an entire new method in the monster struct itself that's called take damage and pass in a number. But for now, we're just going to use getters and setters. And now we're going to check to see if the monster is still alive. We'll say if monster is less than or equal to zero, it's dead. So what do we do? Well, we kill the monster. We'll say monster is dead. And then we'll kill this monster script. And the way we do that is we call a destroy method on the current game object like so. 
And what this will do is destroy this game object. It will destroy the cube. Eff effectively, the cube will disappear. And for now, let's, if it's not dead, let's have it print out its health. Okay, back to Unity. I'm going to select the cube here, and I'm going to take this My Monster script and drag it on it. Now we're going to set the damage. Let's set the damage to be, let's say, yeah, let's say 40. That way we don't have to keep on enabling and disabling the cube. I'm going to start the game. We're going to select this, the cube and make sure the console's open. And now I'm going to disable the cube. And you can see health is 60. We'll click this again. It's 20. And the reason, of course, it's disappearing is because we're disabling it. And now we'll, we'll click this one more time. You can see the cube in the hierarchy right here. When I disable it, you can see monster is dead and the cube is removed from the hierarchy.